And we'll go all the way from chapter 6 to verse 18. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men assuredly I say to you they have their reward but when you do a charitable deed do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing that your charitable deed may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, And when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore do not be like them. For your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to be fasting but to your Father who sees in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. I'm just going to let you guys sit with that and read it and think about it. That's really great. Okay, um, 
I don't have much to say. Um, I don't know if you guys ever heard this Grateful Dead lyric. Sometimes the lights all shining on me. Other times I could barely see. <laughs> I sat down to do, you know, every every Thursday. I usually read the reading Wednesday or at least Thursday morning. Then um, I let it gestate. Uh, then if I sit down, usually a cloud of power comes over me. And in about an hour, everything I want to say is, it just comes, you know, it's pretty easy. So the cloud of power came, and then it just went. <laughs> and I was like, no, you've got to be kidding me. And it didn't come back. And that's really rare uh, these days. But anyway, so that's kind of what happened with me today. So that's why it was a sharing class. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say, just little things, nothing nothing very important. But, you know, uh, Raya's imperfect and all that, but she, Raya's in my camp. And, um, you know, there's different camps but Rai is in my camp, and people from my camp, we have about 10 times more pain than everyone else. So, you know, whatever pain you have to heal, just know some of us had 10 times more. And Rai had more than me. She started with more than me. There's not very many people I could say that about. And it's just impressive. Everything that's happening with her is a big deal. And what I tell people is, I'm not very impressive unless you know where I came from. And then you'd be very impressed. <laughs> and Ray is one of those people, you know, it's a big deal where she came from. And, and um, uh, really good sharing. Um, I'm glad it got shared the way it was. I'm glad it happened the way it was because the stuff that didn't come is like all the million. There's like, it's hard to explain, but there's every nuance of what it all means just drops in. And that does that stuff didn't come. And, um, but what I think it's really what he's talking about is your motive. Like, what's your motive? And, he's, and, and then he, and notice how Jesus says, when you pray, when you fast, and when you are charitable, when you do charitable deeds. This is the way a master speaks. The rest of us come down at lower levels and we have to say, hey, you guys need to, you need to really be praying a lot. We've we got to say it again and again. Jesus doesn't need to do that. The whole freaking world is listening when he talks, even when they're not there. So he says, when you. And so first thing you need to know is he's telling you, you will do those three things. Those are three things you will do. And charitable, you know, it's like you think of it as money, but it's just not just that. It's, it's, a, it's any charity is giving love to people and being generous in that love. And there's lots of ways to do it. You know, you if you if you see someone and you and you have genuine goodwill towards them and you say good things about them that are true, you overlook their faults, that's charity. That's charity. And kids especially, if you're around kids and you you they're already little munchkins, you know, they're kind of in bliss world. And if you go out of your way to give them all that love coming from an adult, that's charity. That is charity. To get out of yourself and just give is charity. So, so, but, but he's talking about motive and I wanted to abstract off those three things that he's saying you'll do. And so now you know you'll do them because he said you'll do them. If you want in, here's three things you'll do. Right? You'll fast and you'll pray and you'll give. That's what you'll do if you want in. And then he also says you'll forgive. And think about that one. He said, if you don't forgive other people, God won't forgive you. It's not quite true. That's a pretty rigid way to speak. But he wants you to hear it. But it is true that if you don't forgive other people, you'll never let yourself in love either. Never. So it's, you know, it's like you've got to free people. You've got, you, you got to forgive. It, forgiveness doesn't mean you'll sign up for more abuse from somebody. It doesn't even mean you'll hang out with somebody. It just means that in your heart of hearts, you'll really forgive them and have love for them. And we, we really are called to do that. To the degree that we don't, to that degree, we won't experience God's kingdom. So it's a big deal. It's why he's saying it. It's such a big deal. But I, the, on the motive part, what I wanted to say was, you know, I'm a mystic, so so sometimes it means I accurately assess spiritual energy. <laughs> and sometimes I don't, and I think I have. 
And my wife busts me on once in a while. She'll say, you're just wrong. You think you feel it, you don't know. And I think she's right. I think she's right when she says that. So, you know, yes, I'm making assumptions. But one of the things I've noticed is when people are talking, it, it's, 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 it, there's like a bleed of power that comes through from God. And to the degree that the motives are false, to that degree there's no power that comes through them into the world. They could be saying all the right things, doing all the right things, but there's no power that comes through unless the motive is right. It, it, you, from this perspective, okay, it, I would have to add all these nuances to just leave this statement here, but I'm going to leave it here. A person doing the wrong thing with good motives is more powerful in the world than the person doing the right thing with wrong motives. They are. Because God's power just recognizes like, oh, this person is true. They're being true. True, you know, it's, this person is true. And God can come through that and pour out into that. <clears throat> And that's kind of our job in the world is to bring this light comes from God through us into the world. And it's happening all the time when we're being true. All the time. You, you, if you're not a mystic, you don't notice. It, but it is. It's bleeding off of you. I, I see Jill radiating light all the time. She tells me, genuinely, I don't know what you're talking about and I don't see it. And, and, and that's fine. I believe her. I totally believe her. But I also still see it. That's it. I'm a mystic. I do see it. I see it coming off people all the time. Little acts of things people are doing, and you can feel this power. But then, but then there's this other motivation, and you know it's the social instinct. But there's so many different. You know, don't lock into that only because we want to abstract into just what is the motive behind it. Because there's a lot of motives that don't fit into the way Jesus spoke it that are just as damaging. That, but they're all, they have one thing in common, they're not true. You do something for, uh, one person in my life tells me stuff all the time, but there, there's rarely a time when that person is also not trying to get me to see something they don't have the guts to just say out, outright. <laughs> and, and every time they talk, it's just, it's empty. There's, I can almost not hear them. There is no power coming through. None. Because it's always a lie. It's always a lie. So, so like, think of it as like, I don't know, there's these holes, you know, all these different rings, and, 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 and when they're all lined up, God's power just pours right through them all, right out your soul into the world. And then there's all these things that stop it from coming through. Right? That's kind of the way I think of it. There's a lot of factors. But someone who's just genuinely being sincere, they might be naive, they might be wrong about stuff, there might be a lot of things in the way. But if they're just genuinely sincere, light is coming through them. Light is coming through. And that's our job, to bring light into the world. And it, it really is pouring through you all the time to the degree that you're being true. And the social instinct can crash it and, you know, all of our shame and fears and agendas, all that stuff wrecks it and makes it not come through. And it's why we're, we're so broken in this world. It's why we're so wounded in this world. There's a ton of freaking power waiting to pour through us into the world. To the degree that we can be trusted with that power to the degree that that power will be used accurately, truthfully, honestly, for the right reasons. And there's a lot of it, a lot of it. So it's really all about motive. And the best motive, obviously, is just wanting to do God's will in this world, having surrendered all of our lies and all of our social instinct and wanting to be someone and all the... You know, want to get in that person's pants and, you know, or impress this person for those reasons and all that stuff, man. All, all of that that we can just surrender and really let it go. Um, power can come through. This is almost always true. I can tell how good a band is by how they don't dress up or how much they do dress up. If they're dressed to the nines, I know they spent their whole freaking day but with their social instinct. I know they spent their whole day on it. Their whole day. I mean, it, they just, they've been primming and pruning 
for a long time for the social instinct, and that is about as much, I don't care how good they are, they could be excellent, but it's empty. There's nothing there. It's all social instinct. It's like that clear. And there's just power or there's not power. It's that simple. There's either power able to come through or power not able to come through. God is the good. Like in that abstract cosmic sense, the good. So Jesus is here saying, line up to the good. Line up to the good and do these things. And line up to the good and do these things for these reasons. And on one on one level, it's like, let's do that so that we can have families where people actually don't have to pretend to be a part of the family. You know, where you can actually sit at dinner and be who and what you really are and where you really are and not put on an act and have to start faking it to get by. I can feel more power coming through someone who's pissed at me and being honest than I can someone who's being really nice but isn't true. In the rooms, in this room, if someone is being true, even if they're totally full of crap, they bring more power than someone who puts on an act. It's like that. So on the one hand, it's, you know, how do we build a society and a culture and, 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 and structures, you know, institutional structures that are actually doing what they're doing because it is truly a good thing to do and not doing what they're doing because there could be some benefits from doing it somewhere else. Because all that is just physical spin. You're just spinning physical reality and rearranging stuff, but you're not pouring light into the world that way. Like, we'll set up a charitable foundation, but let's start the advertising campaign so everyone knows we've done it, because that gives us cloud over here. And now there's no power. Now it's just money getting shifted around, but there's not God's power pouring into the world through it. And that power gets picked up by people when it's there. And it, it heals people. It does miracles. So it's like, it's like, how much of that power are we letting through us? That's all that matters. That's all that matters. But the other end of it, which I think is just as important, is the, sort of the mystical end. And I wanted you guys to really consider this because it's... Because I, I, what I know is coming for all of you, if you continue pers to persist and pursue the spiritual path. It, it, you, you know, you, you've been on the path a long time, and you know how it is for you. And I can tell you right now, you don't know how it is. You only know how it is at a certain stage. And the other stage, the next stage, is so much brighter, so much more powerful, so much more incredible. And you have no idea yet. It, it, there's newness and life that is available. Lots of it. And it's, all God, it's only God's will. That, it's like, what's God's will for you? <laughs> Infinite happiness. Infinite love. There's a lot of power. A lot of power. And we want to align to these motives of true and good and love and honesty and all these things. We want to do that because it gets all those, it gets all those rings lined up so that God's power could pour through into the world. And so that God sees a vessel that can be trusted with power. Like a vessel God could put in the world with power that doesn't mislead or harm. That will won't, won't won't fall into the traps. I mean, you don't have to be perfect, but there's all these traps. Peace, joy, love. Jesus says, peace, joy, love. 
And also faith, hope, charity, right? These ascents. Peace, joy, love. Peace is all the purification. Rai is working on peace. <laughs> all that pain she's talking about, that's her working on peace. Because you're just never at peace when you have all that in you. And I know, because I'm in her camp. It's, you could be 15 years in and have less peace than some people came out of their family of origin with. And they're whining about their family of origin. <laughs> It's amazing. It just, it's like, some people tell me that, and I'm like, man, God, if that was my family, oh, wow, that would be incredible. So incredible, man. Peace is all that purification and the, the, the quiet vibe that's so subtle, you can't notice it when you're in chaos. That exists, that is in God, that peace of God. But then there's joy and then there's love. And here's how I think, here's how I think it feels. Here's how I think it's like if you, um, this is the best way to, um, to describe it. I, I don't know if you've ever seen, you know, dams, like water dams, and they're giant, just, you know, like really giant water dams, and at the very bottom they have these valves they could open. And if they open one, like say it's like this big, they open one and it's just, it's hundreds of thousands of pounds of pressure just, I mean, it, it shoots through like a freaking rocket, right? It blows through. And it's shooting for 400 feet, blinding white freaking water just shooting out. And I'm telling you, man, that is what it feels like when God's love starts to pour through you. And I'm not exaggerating even a little bit. There's no hyperbole. There is power. It is God's power. And it is love. It's love. And it heals people. It's not, it's, yes, it's faith. It's faith, but it's power. And it does miracles in the world. But we, we got to let God get us there. You know, we got to let God do all the things so that when they open those floodgates, you don't get ripped in two and die. Because I think that's really possible were it to open like if you found a way to open it without god opening it at the right time i think it could actually kill you and blow you freaking up and i don't think that's an exaggeration at all i don't think i'm speaking with hyperbole i think that's true so it's real power it's real power and and never in maybe i don't know if this is quite true i the some of the scholars i like are saying this there has never been a time in history when humanity has been more divorced from meaning. Never. They, they are saying, the people that are really paying attention are saying it has never happened. This is brand new. We have never, ever been completely unhooked from our meaning-making systems, religion, with nothing to replace it with. We've never been here. There's never been a time, never. And what does it mean? And, and, and that's why God is doing these things in people. That's why God is preparing people to bring light to people who have none. To say, I know there's meaning and purpose to people who have never known meaning and purpose. Now there are children raised by parents who never knew it. That's how far gone we are. There's been times when a generation might have faded, but their parents hadn't faded, or their grandparents hadn't, but now we've got kids being raised in families that never knew it. They don't even have a memory of it. You are the light of the world for those people. You have to be able to say, I get it, but I know there's meaning and I've found it. It's not that hard to find. You have to be able to tell people that. And they have to feel that it's true when you say it and not bullshit. It has to have power.
one one scholar said that they think they're we're in a race to save humanity before social media completely destroys us. It's the social instinct, the sexual instinct. You, you, you know what it is when you get involved in that. It's all the same stuff. It's, it's, it's a woman driving two hours to get to the top of a mountain to take pictures and say she was there and then freaking leaving and not enjoying the mountain. It's that. Utterly meaningless. Life. You know, there's got to be other places where this is happening, right? So, like, we're a part of this invisible movement where the Holy Spirit is raising people up, helping others come along to a life that means something. That's it. A um, couple of announcements. So we.